Leading health groups are raising a red flag and issuing strong warnings on smoking and the related underlying health conditions that can increase risks of getting the coronavirus as the numbers of positive COVID-19 cases spike across our state. Here to talk about the importance of encouraging smokers and vapors to stop smoking and protect their health is the president of Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, Matthew Myers. Welcome to the show, Matthew. Thanks for having me. Talk about how smoking can add to someone's risk of contracting COVID-19. Well, we know that smoking is an independent risk factor for the most severe consequences of tobacco, of smoke, of COVID, excuse me. Um, and that's particularly important. If you're seeing a spike in California, even among young people, we now know that if you're a smoker, and we think eventually we'll believe even if you're vaping, you have a much greater risk of suffering the kind of severe consequences that lead to hospitalization and eventually even a greater risk of mortality. Particularly important because we are seeing a disproportionate impact among the Latino and African American community. And the tobacco industry has targeted those two communities like a laser beam for decades. Well, Matthew, you talk about a bigger impact among Latinos and the communities of color. Why is that? Well, there are a lot of reasons why we're seeing a dramatically greater impact among Latinos and African Americans. It includes the fact that many of them are essential workers. They live in multi-generational housing. Um, many of them suffer from many of the underlying conditions that re result in increased risk. But we also know the tobacco industry has targeted them like a laser beam so that we see higher smoking rates among that population than we would others particularly with menthol cigarettes and other flavored products. And so among the many problems that we can't deal with, the one that we can is to reduce the risk by reducing tobacco use in that population. And you believe it's been a long time practice for the tobacco industry to target these vulnerable communities? Well, you know, the tobacco industry has targeted them for literally decades. You know, if you go back a couple of decades ago, um, African-Americans didn't smoke menthol cigarettes at rates higher than their peers, but today they do. And that's particularly important because menthol makes it easier to start and harder to quit. Another very serious dilemma, California has done a fabulous job at reducing cigarette smoking among young people. High school smoking rates are down to 2%, but more than five times as many are now smoking flavored e-cigarettes. And flavors are the key here with regard to that. Flavored e-cigarettes harm your lungs and weaken your immune system in many of the same ways that cigarettes do. They may not be as dangerous, but when it comes to COVID, this is a time where if you're a smoker or a vapor, it's never been more important to quit. Yeah, it's time to get serious and really listen up. Also talk about why it's important for us to help people, maybe people we know that are smoking and vaping. Well, you know, there's a couple of things that we, we know we can do. First of all, it's a good time for parents and kids to be sitting down with each other and talking about the health risks and providing support to each other. As an organization, we have listed on our website, tobaccofreekids.org slash COVID-19, both um, suggestions for parents and how to talk to their kids, and as well, resources for free, proven ways to help them quit smoking. There's something else that can be done. You know, the California legislature is considering legislation to ban the sale of all flavored e-cigarettes and menthol cigarettes. Sacramento did it earlier this year. It's one way that we could dramatically reduce the risks that our kids are facing and help adults who are quitting too, smoking too quick. And when it comes to the numbers, what's needed for health officials to be able to really help these communities? Is more research going to help? Well, what we really need here is we know a great deal. And, now, and California has some of the best quit smoking programs in the United States. Other organizations like the Truth Initiative and the CDC also have resources to help individuals who are smoking or who are vaping to quit. In addition, public officials have a very important role to play here. They can eliminate the kind of marketing to young people that makes these products attractive. They can eliminate the sale of all of the flavored products. More California kids smoke flavored cigars than they do cigarettes, and even more smoke flavored e-cigarettes. Eliminating the sale of those products would have a dramatic effect. Yeah, I'd also like to address a very important issue. Many smokers and even some vapors think, gee, why should I quit now? It's too late. 
And the answer is, that's not true. If you quit smoking, if you quit vaping, your lungs begin to see um, improvement almost immediately. Your heart sees improvement almost immediately. So the short answer is, it's never too late to quit. All right, Matthew Myers. What's that website again where viewers can go for more information? Well, they can go to our website, tobaccofreekids.org slash COVID-19. But I'd also encourage them to go to the CDC's website. The CDC is a reliable, dependable uh, source that they can trust. All right, Matthew Myers with Tobacco Free Kids, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having us today.